Hello and welcome to the Turn 4 Podcast. I am your host, Dan Maldonado. If this is your first time listening, welcome. If you're a regular listener, welcome back. Uh, let me introduce you to my co-host, Tim Reiner. Hey, Timmy. Hello, Dan. Good evening. Hey, we are not insiders. We attempt to give you a fan's perspective. Tonight, we have a very special guest. Max Pappas is a professional of motorsport. Yes, motorsport. He has driven at Le Mans and has driven in IndyCar, Formula One, various NASCAR series, and sports cars, where he was co-champion with Scott Pruitt in 2004. He has two Rolex 24 wins, two 12 Hours of Sebring wins, and he's also started the 24 Hours of Le Mans seven times. He's currently a steward for IndyCar, as well as CEO and co-founder of his own company, Max Pappas Innovations. Please welcome Max Pappas to Turn 4. Hi, Max. Good to see you guys. Yeah, thanks for joining us, Max. We appreciate it. How are awesome. you? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Still got a couple hours left in a very busy day, no doubt, right? Uh, so my days, I know when they start. I, don't, I never know when they end. But <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, never, yeah, never schedule anything like that. That's always the best. No, no, no. We, we actually have schedule. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said lines to meet, right? Yeah, the, to last, meet uh, the, the last uh, three hours of the day, uh, they are, uh, you know, unscheduled, but scheduled at the same time. Sure, sure. Yeah. We always say never set uh, business hours, just you know what you have to get done today. And um, just when you done. want a business, uh, you know, you basically get, you know, you got to get stuff done when it's time to get stuff done. For sure. For and, sure. Uh, you know, it, it's as simple as that, you know, so, but it, it's, uh, no complaint about it. We're super excited about it. Right. Everything. everything. Hey, um, we're going to talk a little bit about your career, um, all the racing career and everything that you've done, all, all the terrific accomplishments that we talked about here in the introduction. Um, just briefly, if can you tell us how you came about um, this current role as, as, a, as a steward in IndyCar? Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, it's quite simple. You know, like uh, I... You know, uh, Jay Fry uh, is, a, is a current president of IndyCar. Uh, you know, I've worked with him. I knew him in NASCAR for a long, long time. And uh, when he became president, he wanted, uh, you know, he asked me if I was going to go and join him and help him in this, you know, task. And uh, um, I did it because uh, I know Jay and I know that uh, he was going to, you know, help the sport in a very positive way. And I just felt that I wanted to, to help him in, the, in this task. So it was, it was quite simple. Did you know Jay Fry as like through Red Bull? Because what he used to was yeah, the I knew Jay Red Bull, for a long time. You know, like uh, he was uh, used to be uh, um, the person in charge of uh, Valvoline. Oh, uh, the long, long time in the sponsorship. So I knew, I knew him for maybe seven or eight years in NASCAR. And uh, so when he, when he asked me to do that, he was, uh, you know, I don't I don't think I would have done it if Jay. You know, I I know I would have not done it if Jay was not there. Yeah. That's good. Good to know. Because it's a it's a role that uh, you know it, uh, it it can create a lot of controversy. So it's a place that uh, um, you know in you, you need to do it for the right reason. That is helping the sport, and that's that's uh, that's what I love to do. That's why that's why I joined. I wanted to make sure that uh, I was uh, doing something good for the sport. For sure, and I, I'll tell you. I mean, I I think that role for you being able to do that is unless you're really somebody that that follows the series very very closely i think you wouldn't realize that but i think that's really the intention of that role right you shouldn't really know who you are or who the chief steward is or anything like that because that might just indicate that you're just a little too involved in what's going on on track absolutely like you know like uh, at the end of the day um, uh, i'm i'm trying to be you know both me and ari we try to be as invisible as possible you know, obviously we're a part of the sport, you know, we help, but, you know, again, you know, uh, that's why I, I can't, I'm really not doing too many comments on it. I, you know, even when we do, when we're doing this interview here, it's, uh, uh, it's not about me, it's about the sport. And, um, and, uh, you know, I, I don't just to keep it in a very simple way. I don't look at myself like a policeman at all. Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, I'm, a, you know, I'm a race car driver. You know, I I feel that I'm I'm out there advising and guiding uh, all my competitor when it's time to, and obviously, you know, when it comes down to the race, you know, we have our own rule, we apply the rule, you know. But it's 
is as far as possible from being a policeman. Uh, okay. And uh, and uh, and I feel really proud of the respect that I have from the garages, you know, that, and uh, and uh, the fact that we don't get talked so much, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that at the end of the day, that's uh, that's the role of uh, you know that's our role is basically, you know, making sure that the sport have fair rules uh, that can be implementable, that they are not subjective, you know, but that are objective and uh, and leave a good legacy for the sport, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, you don't want to hear, you don't want to talk about me. You want to talk about, uh, you know, the great athlete that we have in the sport. So that's, uh, uh, to me, that's, uh, that's my goal. And, um, you know, it has been, uh, you know, so far a great journey because I felt that, uh, you know, we, you know, again, uh, we went from uh, um, hearing a lot about uh, uh, my predecessors to hearing less of me. So that's good. Yeah, yeah. It, it is good. Yeah. And as fans of the sport, you know, we see IndyCar really, really uh, launching as uh, this great trajectory of where it's going right now from where it was. And, you know, it's great to be able to look back and contribute and to look at the sport and go, you know what, it's growing. I uh, want to make it a better sport in the future. And so having a part in that, it's really got to be um, something that, you know, you feel good about. And, and it sounds like you're in that place and doing that. So that's great to hear. Absolutely. Like, you know, Jay Fry is uh, a great uh, uh, guide for the sport. You know, you know, he took the sport and he transformed it uh, uh, inside out. And uh, and uh, I'm uh, I'm there right on his side, you know, to do my to do my to do my part. Yeah. And as fans, we want to ride that wave and we want to, you know, see it get as big as it was back in the 90s. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, uh, as I told you, like, you know, I, I was fortunate to be able to be part of IndyCar uh, in an in a era that I didn't even know how important it was uh, when I was in there. But uh, it's, uh, it's definitely awesome to see the enthusiasm of everyone uh, nowadays. And uh, it's just it's something that uh, it's, it's something that uh, makes me really proud. It is. It's great to see everything that's that's really come around for the series and the series change and the interest in the series now. I think um, you know it's great. I mean, that it's a good problem to have when during the off season some of the discussion was we may have too many cars for pit stalls, right? For the availability of pit stalls at some tracks, that's a great problem to have. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that it kept everyone uh, in the in the car office uh, in Indianapolis super busy. But again. You know, it's uh, 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 it's good to see that the enthusiasm. It's actually even good to see that you guys uh, started this podcast. Uh, you know, and the, the, your enthusiasm is there for the sport. So, absolutely, you know, it's it just great. We think we do. A good, we appreciate you saying that. We we think we do. A, a, but you know, we we love the sport and we love the series and we we want to help do our small part to help keep absolutely. it moving in the right direction. So, you know, just talking about it, you know, uh, it, it, it's a special things. And this, you know, IndyCar has always been uh, a, something amazing to look from the outside. And I mean, look at the, the you know, uh, road course, street course, oval, short track, big track. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, you know, it, it, it's uh, one of the most unique uh, uh, form of motor racing you can find. And uh, yeah. it just, uh, it's just uh, amazing, you know, honestly. It's just, uh, as I always say, you know, like uh, I, I driven I driven a lot of different things, but uh, the satisfaction you get uh, from uh, you know being able to be successful in IndyCar because you basically you gotta be good at a lot of different disciplines. Yeah, the, it's something unique, and uh, you know it's uh, yeah it, it, I have great memories about everything I did there. That's great. That's great. Hey, um, I want to if you don't mind, I want to um, go back and talk about how your IndyCar uh, career started. You stepped in after uh, Jeff Krosnoff lost his life at at the race in Toronto. Um, what was that? What was that call like? Were you? Was that unexpected for you? I mean, you know, it, first of all, uh, I keep uh, uh, you know Jeff in my memory every day. And uh, how it happened, it, you know, it's quite simple. You know, like uh, I was uh, driving in sports car for Ferrari, you know, came over here and uh, uh, having a lot of success. And uh, uh, the team owners and the, and the general manager called me and said, you know, you are 
you know, we called you because uh, you must be one of the only one who did not call to get this job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, they didn't want, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was very bad circumstances. You know, Jeff, uh, you know, was an amazing driver. You know, I met him in, uh, in uh, Formula Nippon and uh, him dying uh, in under those circumstances was terrible. So I, you know, it never even came to my mind to look for that opportunity, but they were, they were very firm on, uh, you know, they, they, they knew what I was doing, they knew my potential, and I think the fact that uh, I was not an ambulance chaser as well, mm -hmm. yeah, and, uh, and uh, you know, it's, uh, it's been kind of the way that I am uh, in my life, you know, so it's, uh, you know, uh, yeah, you... values uh, and, uh, and the way who I am uh, comes before, uh, you know, racing, so it's, uh, you know, it was a, it was a something really special to be cold in a circumstance that was that bad. Yeah. yeah. Can I, can I share with you? I, I mean, we're a podcast, so we're going to go out okay. on, on the, you know, it's, it's not a medium that lends to this, but we will put this on our, our YouTube channel. So I was at the Michigan race, which was the first race after Toronto. And this was the picture um, that was set up in what would have been the Arcero Wells garage. At, oh. uh, at Michigan Speedway. I have this picture. I, Tim, I think was shocked that I, I pulled this out, but I'll never forget this because I watched that race in Toronto and, um, and was able to, you know, and watch that and, and was heartbroken at, at what had happened to Jeff in, in Toronto, what happened there. And I loved this picture because I think just captured in this picture shows, right, his, you know, lust for life and, and, really the love of being able to do this and being able to drive the big car. So um, I wanted to share that with you. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the picture very well. And, yeah. uh, you know, his legacy always been uh, with me, you know, and uh, I, 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 I'm very honored and grateful. I was able to continue what he started. So yeah. uh, it's, uh, you know, it was bad, really bad circumstances, you know, but I felt uh, that uh, uh, I tried to remember him every time I could. In sure. every situation, mm -hmm. so his legacy continued uh, with me, and uh, and uh, uh, you know, at the end, you know, it's something life goes on, you know, and uh, uh, it was, uh, you know, but I was pleased that uh, if if it had to happen, it happened to someone like me. Yeah. yeah. Um, our Sarah Wells at that time, I mean, there was a developmental program, right, with with Toyota bringing Toyota into IndyCar. It was all American racers, but they were also developing their own chassis where our Sarah Wells was running a very proven and very capable Reynard chassis with the Toyota. Have you ever been in a development program like that before? No, it was uh, just an amazing experience. You know, it's like the results were not there, but uh, you know, when I look back, I really didn't know exactly what I was part of it, you know, but I was part of the history. Uh, I mean, you know, hundred plus uh, people in the team, uh, test team, uh, race cars, uh, uh, I mean, it was, uh, when you look back, uh, it was a dream come true, you know, and, uh, and uh, it's, uh, it was something uh, that is difficult to describe because uh, uh, it, it would be like nowadays having three IndyCar team under the same roof for one driver. Oh, uh, yeah. So, you know, I was uh, racing on Sunday. We had a full-blown uh, test team uh, at the different track, uh, testing Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Go back and race uh, on the next weekend. Uh, you know, then flying around. Uh, you know, so it was a, uh, it was uh, like a, wasn't like a super intense program. And uh, um, uh, it was uh, what I always say. I was, I've been always very proud of being part of the inception of the to of Toyota Motorsport. Uh, at least in IndyCar at that level. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, you know, I made a lot of friends and I learned a lot. It was just, uh, um, it, it was an opportunity that, uh, you know, it was unrepeatable. You know, it was like, a, you know, just some, something very, very, very unique. Were you also doing those, those testing drives in between the, the races or was that somebody else that was testing? Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, you know, uh, you know, I would have not had anyone sitting in my car. You 
you know, like, um, I mean, it was part of, of who I am, you know, like, yeah. you know, basically they hired me, I was testing the car, I was racing it. And uh, there was no real, no, there was no need uh, for anyone else besides, uh, you know, me testing the car. You know, I don't Which, remember even back days, you know, there was even any thought about uh, test driving because uh, it was part of what we did. Yeah. Which seems much more intense than what it is today with the limited testing that these drivers get today. And I even think if you brought in a new manufacturer, right, that they wouldn't get the same amount of time that they, they did back then. So it allowed you to, and that team to, you know, gel, right. And, and really work on the development of that because the, the rules I believe were, were less stringent and you could do more of that. Um, I mean, the, the, world, like, the amount of money that was spent, it was like, you know, uh, stupid. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like uh, I, I don't know the budgets, you know, but like uh, you know, I'm sure we're, you know, in the hundreds of million. Yeah. Wow. Like so, it was wow. like, you know, mm, it's it was closer to Formula One than anything else had been. You wow. know, like it was closer to top Formula One teams. You yeah. know, so it was a uh, you know basically it, it was Toyota going racing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's not uh, PPI. You know, it was yeah. a manufacturer going racing. So it was uh, like, um, you know, I, I don't know the, the budget involved, you know, but as I told you, like, you know, it's uh, 120 people, you know, for, uh, for a one and a half car team. Right? This is the heyday of IndyCar, right? So it's like, I don't know if it's the heydays, you know, like, you know, for sure, you know, like it was, it was the time that I joined it and I liked it a lot. It was a, uh, uh, it, it was a special, special moment. I didn't know when I was in there that was that special. You know, I mean, yep. I just was doing my thing, and and I enjoy, I enjoyed it a lot. But you know, when I look back at it, I really, I'm, I'm saying, wow, that was, uh, you know, you know, that was something, uh, you know, unrepeatable. You know, like uh, it's uh, was uh, just an amazing time of uh, for for me in the sport and racing in general. So, yeah. and those cars were un believably fast right i mean they had all of the power and then some again you know that it's, time. Uh, you know we were changing uh, one engine every day you know so like uh, uh the uh, one engine i think did uh, you know 500 miles so uh so, so basically one engine you know we had a practice engine and race engine so mm -hmm. the uh it, it was uh, it was one of those moments uh, where mm, i mean it was all a, it was a battle between them I mean, there was goodyear firestone uh, you know toyota mercedes uh, uh ford uh, honda uh i mean it was uh, like a, a big battle of power between major co major corporation and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, you, like when I look back, you know, those, those cars were like, for sure, the most challenging and uh, the most uh, real cars uh, that I ever, ever drove in my life. Yeah. And you were, you were signed to carry on with, uh, with Arcero Wells, but then you had an opportunity to move to uh, Ray Hall, to Team Ray Hall. So was Arcero Wells allowed you to, to move at that time? It was a uh, strange circumstances. You know, if I look back, uh, I wish that uh, I, you know, that uh, back then uh, team owner Mr. Cal Wells would have made different decisions. You know, because uh, uh, I went to him, you know, with uh, this proposal. You know, Bobby Rail was retiring. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You know, I was under contract with PPI. You know, and uh, and. Uh, uh, and I went to the team owner, you know, more like for a, as an advice. And I say, so um, and I have this opportunity to join Team Rahal. Uh, what do you think? And, uh, and he basically told me that uh, I was free to go if I wanted. And uh, back then, you know, mm, I loved every second I spent with Mr. Rahal. You know, mm -hmm. it was an honor to, to, to be the guy that uh, uh, he he chose to replace him in the sport but at the same time uh, if i would have been better advised uh, i think i should have i would have stayed uh, with toyota and developed uh, uh, continue to develop the car continue my career there 
uh, it was just a I was just a you know 26 year old kid that I wanted to to win right right here right then you know not very 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 well advised in terms of like uh, you know you know I yeah you know it, it was not a mistake it was something great but when I look back uh, when I look back uh, yeah he, I should have I should have finish off my contract and uh, continue to do what I had to do there and uh, then see whatever what was happening you know I was uh, you know mm, I'm, I'm not really sure yet why uh, Mr. Calwells uh, told me that it was okay to go you know like uh, you know I wasn't sure you know like uh, he said you know that basically that he could have not provided the results that the team was going to provide and uh, the idea that team Rahal was going to provide so he was a uh, you know, I wish that uh, it, you know, maybe it would have been a little bit firmer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sure. Sure, sure. Hey, um, so this was stepping out of what was a factory effort that you, you described with all these people and all these resources that went into that. And Team Rahal was certainly a capable team, um, good resources, great sponsorship, and moving into what was a pretty good situation, but was not real a factory effort right they were a ford customer team i think just like i i think at that time maybe if if ford had a customer team it probably would have been newman haas but set, what were the differences that you saw going from i want to call it ppi because our sarah wells doesn't exactly roll off my tongue but um so going from ppi to ray hall like what were some of the differences that you saw right off right off the bat well uh, yeah. I remember that uh, Team Rahal was, uh, you know, a, an amazing, a very, very good group of people. Uh, you know, they, are, they were all racers. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, the main difference was the fact that uh, uh, there was, uh, you know, uh, there were the, there were resources, but different resources in a way. Mm -hmm. like, you know, there were uh, their car was. You know, obviously it was developed, ready to go, ready to win races. Uh, it was just a complete different approach. You know, like uh, with PPI and Toyota was more like a project. Mm -hmm. uh, there it was uh, uh, like a racing team. I, I didn't understand what the, what, uh, the Toyota group was actually doing until... Um, you know, until I went to a different place where mm -hmm. it was, I said, okay. more of a project, you know, like uh, I got what I wanted. There was uh, the opportunity to win races and uh, get to know Mr. Rahal that became, uh, you know, is still now one of the greatest advisor that I have, you know, someone that uh, I look up to him, you know, he's really, you know, someone that I admire a lot. Uh, so I built a great, I, I had great experiences, but at the same time, uh, you know, uh, the, the where you know, God uh, made me, made, you know, that was the path that I had, you know, but I really learned a lot as well and said, mm -hmm. if I have to do certain things again, uh, I, uh, I would have done them slightly different, uh, maybe, uh, you know, a little bit less, uh, thinking a little bit less, a little bit less uh, uh, on the immediate and more like in the long term. Sure, sure, sure. You had to, you moved to Columbus, Ohio at that time too? Yeah, I went uh, from, you know, basically PPI was based in California. I went mm -hmm. from there and I spent a bit of time in Columbus. Uh, and, uh, and again, you know, like uh, I, I said, I was just, I was a kid. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, although, you know, yeah, the, the age maybe at 26, you know, but I was still not very mature. And, uh, um, and, uh, I, I spent time, I lived in Columbus, Ohio for a little bit, and then, uh, uh, you know, moved uh, in Miami, you know, mm -hmm. the reason why I'm not so sure, you know, like, uh, you know, I remember talking to Bobby and uh, kind of, uh, you know, yeah, like, you know, I, I, there were... There, there were a lot of testing down there in Florida, you know, but the, yeah, but I, I, I spent a lot of time over there in Columbus, so, you know, it would have been, it would have been good as well to live there full time. Yeah. 
But face yeah. it, Miami, Columbus, come on. It's, it's Miami. Yeah. That's where, if you're young. No, and- no, no, I'm a race car driver, and I, I, I don't care where I live. I just want to <laughs> just want to race. I just want to race. I, I want to win. Yeah. You know, that's perfect. Win. For me, you know, like uh, the lifestyle of being a race car driver never interested me. You know, yeah. like for, for me, my only interest is winning, was winning, being successful. Yeah. You know, I could, yeah. sleep, I could sleep in the car. Yeah. I don't care. You know, so it was a... Uh, it was absolutely not for that reason. You know, it was more yep. like, uh, because be able to train more and do stuff. There were a lot of drivers down there in, in the area of, of Miami. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it was, you know, mm, again, you know, like uh, uh, when I look back at it, uh, you know, I, I really liked uh, how some people when I was there in California kept me in line and they, and they, they, they knew my strength and my weaknesses. And, uh, you know, yeah, I, I it could have it, it would have been uh, good to keep to have that advice even later on in my life. Yeah. So, um, want to take advantage of the of the time that we have with you, um, which we're extremely appreciative of. So, you mentioned sleeping in a car, which kind of reminds me. Tim and I were at the Rolex Twenty Fourth this year. Um, we slept in the car. We did. <laughs> well, Believe after or midnight not. or about midnight, I think we went back to the car. I tried to watch um, some of the broadcast on the computer. I fell asleep immediately, but I had planted this seed about carbon monoxide in Tim's head, but that's neither here nor I. Um, I slept just fine. Tim uh, was, <laughs> I was up all night researching, <laughs> like, can I get carbon monoxide sleeping in the car out here right outside turn four at Daytona? I have no idea. Yeah. The chances are very, very, very First. minimum, uh, minimal that you did actually uh, get carbon monoxide poisoning. But anyways, we slept in the car, so we can relate a little so bit. It reminds me when you said that. You could, but... you, could have, uh, you could have given me a call. I would have def- definitely tell you that, uh, you know, I had plenty of experience between uh, all my racing growing up, but ju- just uh, using my car as my house. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, we let the car run all night because it was super cold. Uh-oh. And I was like, eh. yeah. and. You know, we all we woke up the next day. Too. We all, yeah. the two of us woke up and yeah. we're all fine. So, yeah. So, um, so we were there. It was my second visit to the Rolex 24. It was Tim's first visit. Um, I feel like sports car endurance racing is the most competitive racing. I feel like money doesn't necessarily matter as much once you're on track for 24 hours. Do you agree? What's your, what's your feeling of sports car racing? Sports car racing nowadays is a very, very different thing than uh, than uh, the sports car racing that I knew. Uh, nowadays, uh, sports car racing, it's basically uh, going as fast as you can for the time you're sitting in the car. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a little different. It's a different approach w- uh, of uh, what I call the, you know, uh, endurance racing that was a uh, managing yourself managing the car uh understanding uh, you know when was time to push at the best uh, extract everything of the car and nowadays the car is so reliable that basically the the job of the driver you're more like an indicator driver you know where every corner count every you know outlap count everything counts so um it's a very different approach uh, uh it's a lot closer to that's why you see a lot of open open wheel guy or young guy going to sports car racing and you don't see a lot of uh, you know mm, a lot of the older generation uh, because uh, uh, they want speed and they want uh, uh, basically the experience is not as important it is important but speed is as important mm-hmm. as experience while sometimes back uh, uh, there was a big compromise, you know, like when I showed up at sports car racing, they didn't really like me a lot because uh, they they thought I was I didn't know how to manage the car, you know, I knew how to go fast, but I didn't know how to make it last. And yes. uh, so nowadays, and uh, nowadays I would have been the perfect candidate, you know. Yeah. Like Speaking of speed and going fast. I- you got your name, your nickname, if you will, at the 24 hours of Daytona in 1996, when you took a car and unlapped yourself uh, against Wayne Taylor. And that's where the the name Mad Max came. Is that correct? Could you recall that moment? Oh, yeah, I remember exactly. Like, you know, the nickname came uh, thanks to Bob Barsha. Oh, uh, I, yeah. friend of the show. Yeah. yeah, like I basically 
I was completely unknown in America. You know, they didn't really want me to drive the Ferrari a lot in the team because they weren't sure if I was, you know, they, they, they didn't know if I was going to break it or not, basically. And uh, uh, when they thought that they had no more chance, they put me in the car, you know, because the car was like a few laps down. And, uh, and I knew that uh, uh, that was my chance, my opportunity, you know, and uh, I just gave it all I had. Uh, back then, that was not normal. You know, like the people were not squeezing every ounce out of the car every lap. I did it. Uh, and uh, that changed my career and my life. You know, that moment, uh, you know, that 24 hour put my name on the map. And uh, I was very, very conscientious that should that could have been maybe my only one chance. You yeah. know, I came over from, uh, you know, pretty disappointing uh, time over in Europe. Uh, and uh, when they when they told me that I could put my ass in the car and go, I knew that that uh, was the, you know, was my time. And, yeah, because uh, your IndyCar career started after that stint absolutely. at Daytona. Yeah, so that did put you on the map. And you came into IndyCar as Mad Max. Mad Max. Yeah. And uh, I still remember back in the day calling you that when we were watching the races. So, yeah. 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 And that kind of really represent, uh, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, my personality in a way, like, you know, that, uh, you know, I'm, I don't leave any stone unturned, you know, like, uh, like, like that opportunity that I had with the Ferrari in, I mean, there, as much that uh, I remember clearly, like there was no speed limit in pit lane in Daytona. Uh, mm -hmm. I, right. I drove down in pit lane wide open, you know, oh, as crazy. as a car could go 200, whatever it is, you know, they put speed limit, uh, you know, right after that. Yeah. Uh, in, you know, so, and I remember as well, like, uh, you know, doing things that I'm, you know, I remember doing donuts in Rhode Island, in Rhode Atlanta when I won my first uh, race <laughs> uh, and people were asking what the heck is the guys doing? You know, <laughs> it was, uh, you know, celebrating. Yeah. All the yeah, hard work that yeah, went but into it. it. Not, it will, maybe nowadays, uh, you guys, uh, you know, like people see that uh, as something acceptable. You know, back then, uh, you know, like uh, with a million dollar car, uh, you like they, very few people dared about, uh, you know, you know, bring it over to the limit or doing things like I was doing. And uh, I just didn't didn't even know. Like I, I, just, I was just uh, I wanted to be successful. And I knew that. Uh, you know, I only had one gear, you know, and uh, when I, when I sat in the car, I only had one gear that was, uh, you know, you know, be the best I could be. Go and, fast. Uh, yeah. I mean, I just, uh, uh, I learned a lot, you know, being surrounded by great teammates, you know, but, but again, you know, my, my goal was uh, speed. Every you, time were, I sat there. you were racing for Moretti, right? Is that the. Absolutely. Yeah. The founder of Momo, Mr. Right. Giampiero Moretti that, uh, you know, it was a, uh, you know, great teacher for me. Like I learned a lot from him, and uh, and actually, you know, most of the things that I learned from him, I've been applying it nowadays in my MPI in my company. Yeah, so, that, so you know, it's a steering wheel company that is basically it's uh, it's everything I learn uh, from um, the maestro, Mr. Moretti, the founder of one of the most important uh, company in the world for steering wheel, Momo. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So MPI is, and we want to give you a chance to talk about it. Um, yeah, we can talk fascinated by it. But so MPI is a champion in IndyCar, in NASCAR, right? I mean, you MPI, have. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to tell you super simple what yeah. the story of MPI. Uh, I was testing in NASCAR. They were using an antiquated steering wheel. I had a crash. I hurt myself. And uh, I felt that they, they were in need of uh, something uh, better. Mm -hmm. uh, went back you know, uh, to back to my days, you know, when I, you know, I, I got to know all these people that used to work uh, uh, in the steering wheel industry. And uh, I, I developed this, this steering wheel for me, Jimmy Johnson, Dale Jr. I think uh, Jeff Gordon was driving. Um, and uh, uh, in the beginning, you know, the, the, the steering wheel was actually called, uh, what was a Momo steering wheel. You know, I did that uh, in, in honor of Mr. Moretti, and then uh, developed into MPI. You know, it became uh, you know you know people you know in NASCAR uh, they they thought that that Momo name was actually me, mm -hmm. and I, you mm -hmm. know then they they encouraged me to kind of say that no, why don't you do your own stuff? 
and uh, we start doing it. And now, uh, I mean, we are 13 times NASCAR champion, you know, uh, four times supercar champion, IndyCar awesome. champion, Indy 500 winner. And uh, it's, a, it's a real business, you know, Max Path is innovation. And uh, yeah, it's something that prides me tremendously because uh, I've been servicing the sport you know, but and besides that, you know, we are we Knoxville National Championship in dirt. We are a real, we are the market leader in uh, in racing in America, but in real in the, in the real American racing as well. You know, with uh, dirt racing, midget uh, drag racing, uh, and uh, you know, it's a, it's a pride for me to be able to apply what I learned in my career uh, and uh, make it in a business that it, it was not supposed to be a business. You know, mm -hmm. it just started like, uh, let's make a 10 steering wheel and be safer for my friend, uh, for me, Jimmy, and a few other guys. And, uh, and, uh, it's, uh, something, uh, amazing. And, uh, it really reflects the, the, what America is all about. Uh, that is a chance of, is a land of opportunity. Uh, it's a land of opportunity. I came over here, you know, after a huge disappointment in F1, I rebuilt my career, you know, then America gave me a chance again uh, to do, you know, to do these things, uh, uh, you know, with MPI. So it's a real land of opportunity. And, uh, and, uh, and I hope that everyone really understand that, you know, and appreciate what they got, uh, you know, being able to live in this country, because uh, it's uh, something that uh, uh, it's unreal. You know, when I look back at the opportunity that the USA gave me, uh, both on the competition side uh, and uh, on the human side, uh, it's just amazing. And uh, obviously, I'm super proud of being Italian, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. eventually one day I will go, you know, back and, you know, spend more time over there. But it's, um, you know, just, uh, you know, I am the example of the American dream. That's what I keep saying to everyone. And uh, sure. And, uh, it's uh, I keep I keep reiterating that because uh, I think it's uh, uh, I am the example of what can happen if you put uh, a lot of will. You have got gift and uh, and uh, you don't you know you're resilient. <laughs> was was um... hold on I have to stop for a second. That is an amazing story, and I think that's more of an answer than I. I thought we were going to get out of that. And you are definitely an example of the American dream. I mean, you've, you've embraced it, you've taken it by both hands and you've made everything you possibly could of it. When, in researching this video um, or in this, this opportunity to speak with you today, I saw a video of you talking to Robin Miller. You had a, like a booth set up at the Chili Bowl in 2016. Right. And Robin Miller in only the way Robin Miller can come down. He says, he's, said, Oh, these guys are telling me there's some IndyCar driver out here selling the steering wheel. When I saw that, it was one of the first things I saw too. I thought, Oh, now we get it. Right. Cause I have the benefit of hindsight, right. I'm five years after that video was made. And I'm like, I get it. If Max Pappas, right. You're really, you're out there. You got a canopy set up. You have samples. You you're out there talking to people. That's pride in your product right? Tim and I are both in sales. We both attend trade shows and we do all that stuff. We know what that's like and it can be a drag, but you know what? It's the only way to do it. It's the only way I to do it. The day, you know, like, uh, uh, I'm glad, I'm so glad uh, that uh, I didn't even know that uh, that was in a video and I would love mm -hmm. to be, to have that, to see, because I, I love, I miss Robin every day. Uh, uh, but again, no, it's, uh, mm, I always say I had a God gift about driving the car. And I squeezed every ounce out of it. Uh, then God gave me another opportunity to do these things with my business and the work with IndyCar uh, and uh, be, you know, an advisor for, for some of the young NASCAR driver. Uh, so uh, I feel that uh, doing, you know, doing anything below my 100%, it's, uh, it's uh, not what i'm here for and uh i treat uh, uh my business my the way that i that i do stuff uh, with the same passion that i that i do uh, when i sat in the car in my in, in indy 500 or michigan you know it, it's a it's a project it's a commitment uh, and it's a way of uh, say thanks to the god gift that uh, that god gave me in a way like you know i i said you know if i would have if i would do less than uh, than the best that i could it would not be I would look at a wasted opportunity 
and I never wasted an opportunity in my career, no matter if it was driving or, you know, guiding someone or, you know, again, you know, you know, working with uh, with uh, with a sanctioning body or building my business. And we can tell you speak with conviction, intensity, determination, and it's it it just goes to show like if you put your mind to something and you've got the gifts as well. And even if you work on the gifts you were given, there's a lot that an individual can accomplish here and pretty much anywhere if they put their mind to it. So I'd love to see your, I love your drive. It's great. Um, love your website here that you have for MPI and the products. It looks like you just got into some of the, the SimMax uh, machine here. So it looks like their latest and greatest project that you're working on. And obviously the simulator stuff went really big with the, the, global pandemic that's going on. So I'm sure that's doing well for you as well. Were yeah, you like the main, main things is like, uh, uh, I want to let people know that uh, it's possible. Like I'm born in 600 people village, you know, in Italy. I became uh, raised in F1 and in IndyCar. Uh, you know, I started my own business. So like, uh, uh, I, I always say, yeah, things are tough, you know, but uh, if you know your strengths and weaknesses, and, uh, and uh, was I the best uh, uh, race car driver out there? You know, there were people a little bit better than me at times, uh, but in my best day, you know, versus an okay day of a guy that had one or 2% more God gift, I outrun him. So it's like, uh, uh, there, there is only one Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, when you are that, you know, nothing can stop you, but there are a lot of Scotty Pip. I want to ask, if you were 25 years old today and you had a contract in hand to race for Ganassi or race for Haas, where do you go? I go and race for Chip Ganassi because uh, oh. I want to win races. I love that. Okay. I love that. Thank you for that. Oh, it's the most honest answer I, I think anybody could give. We, we say that because, you know, Pato talked about how a lot of open wheel drivers, their aspiration is to go to Formula One. I don't doubt that for some but I don't think that's for everybody. I yeah, think you go to Formula One and be successful. You know, right. like, uh, I'm sure, you know, that uh, he would say something different if, if he would be offered something uncompetitive, you know, like, uh, of course, you know, it's everyone's dream, you know, and, uh, uh, but it's not uh, as, uh, you know, you know, it's different than what, uh, uh, it's not all, all shiny as it looks like. And uh, the good special things of IndyCar is that uh, if you're a great driver, look at Roman Grosjean, came mm -hmm. over here and he established himself. So, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. I he think it, I think that's the the allure and, and the shine of IndyCar is that anybody up and down that grid for the most part has a chance to win on any Sunday. We're in Formula One, you kind of know who it's going to be. I, hey, Max, it, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. We appreciate the time, every, yeah. all the insights, everything you bring to us. Um, I appreciate you guys. Uh, I appreciate the, the passion you guys have and, uh, and uh, the courage of reaching out uh, and uh, asking questions uh, and uh, the love for the sport because the love that you guys have for the sport is exactly what helped, uh, what built my career. So, uh, you know, just really good. And I wish you guys a lot of luck and uh, and, uh, you know, in, in this endeavor, and uh, hopefully we can see each other sometimes, uh, you know, live. Yeah, right. for sure. So Sounds thank good. you so much and have a great night. Now that is against you. Absolutely. Thanks. Hey, welcome hey. back. Hey, Dan, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm so good. What did you think interview. of that? I enjoyed it. It was good to, you know, talk to Max and really kind of uh, see his passion and his drive. You know, he mentioned he came from a village of only 600 people. That's know, amazing. Amazing. amazing you know, you come that? from that, you build your racing career. You're racing for Ferrari at IMSA. I know his Formula One career, he said, didn't go so well, but you come over IMSA, you run the 24 hours of Daytona, make a name for yourself, you jump into IndyCar, you're with that Toyota development program. And then go over to Ray Hall and do the stuff you do at Ray Hall. And you go to NASCAR, which we really didn't even get into. You know, there was so much to cover. But um, and, then, and then you develop your own company. Like, that's it, – it's the American dream. And um, I, I truly enjoyed it. 
How about you? Uh, so did I. You know, obviously, it's been a couple of days since we did the interview with Max, and then we've had a couple of days to kind We're of do costume it. changes. Yeah, Oops. right. In between, yeah. this is yeah. the second act. But um, we, it's been a couple of days. Had a chance to think about it, look at his answers. Um, I know you spent a lot of time looking at that video. <laughs> yeah, there was and, a little bit of editing. The, the yeah, editing staff. Good. So yeah, great good. job with that. But um, thank you. And I, I looked at it yesterday a couple of times as well. You're right. I, I think, you know, I, I wrote down four topics to kind of just cover out of that, out of that interview. And number one, and you, this is like the first time you and I have not reviewed notes prior to, you know, hitting record here. That is true. First bullet point I have is passion. Right. I, and I, I don't think there's any other bullet point you could start with first after spending, you know, 40 minutes with Max Pappas, which we did. Right. Undoubtedly mm -hmm. a passionate person. He is exactly the same passionate person that he was when we saw him in an Indy car 20 years ago. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Hasn't changed a bit. Not, not at all. And he looks even more fit these days too. Man. I know it's, it's disgusting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we try our best, right? We even got our yeah. bikes in the background, yeah. but man, ugh, I'm not we do our quite best. there. But um, he, he has taken full advantage of everything presented to him. Right. And you mm -hmm. mentioned it. He mentioned it. He is the American dream. Mm -hmm. If you come here, from a village of 600 people as a race dr race car driver he doesn't come from a racing family he obviously mm -hmm. doesn't come from a wealthy family right mm -hmm. so he took advantage of everything that he could really took the american dream to heart and did everything he could with it and there's a certain fearlessness to that right so he he came over it's like grabbing the bulls yeah by the horn yeah right? for the sure. bull by the horn yeah. yeah and he he came over made everything he could uh, and accomplished i think many many things maybe more than what he expected maybe no maybe he really did expect to to do everything he did and, and maybe there's still some things in in his mind that he feels like he can contribute going forward and that's you know where you see with uh max pappas innovations mm -hmm. so 17 hour days or whatever yeah just has the drive and drive you get you get your drive from having a passion about something and his passion is winning because we spoke to him it's all about racing and all about racing he's like no it's all about winning winning That's all yeah. he wants to do in his life is win yeah just want to win um and part of what he saw was going to be part of his winning strategy was that toyota move um and I'm going to continue to call it PPI because that's what he was calling it after a yep, while. That's true. Yep. His Toyota move with, with PPI. And one of the things that just floored me was the investment by a Toyota coming over to IndyCar. Mm -hmm. 100 people, 100 plus people, tens of millions of dollars. They were running on Sunday. They had a full-blown testing team, which he was the test driver as well. Mm -hmm. And they were moving Changing on. engines every day. Yes. And mm -hmm. that right there, and you spoke to it, he didn't seem to agree, but that really is the underscore of the success of Indy car, champ car, what do you want to call it? The success of champ car in the late nineties, you know, prior to the split, mm -hmm. they were real engine manufacturers putting everything into those engines, into those teams and putting everything that they could into that series. The series was flush at the mm -hmm. time. The sport was that big back then. Yeah. I, you know, I can't remember it. It was more important to me because I'm more of an IndyCar fan. But, I mean, is it fair to say it was, it might be as big or a little bigger than NASCAR at that time? Uh, I think it's, it was bigger at that yeah, time. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah. And that a little bit be coming, before then, right? Yeah. From a perspective yeah but that was still really big it was big in a sense that they were drawing hundreds of thousands of fans on qualifying day at indy which they don't do anymore right 
And he likened that experience working with PPI and Toyota to actually being in a full-blown Formula One team. Mm-hmm. And if you think about it, that, that's that's a spot-on comparison because if they were spending a hundred million dollars and you know, maybe they were, maybe they weren't, but they had a hundred people in this program yeah. and it was all full, you know, full steam ahead with two programs. Cause it wasn't just PPI. It was also all American racers with Dan Gurney, the Eagle and their situation, trying to develop the, the Toyota chassis engine and well. engine. Yeah, yeah. That was chassis and engine on that side. So mm-hmm. um, just an amazing effort. Toyota was very successful in IndyCar before they left. They were huge, super successful. successful. Yeah. They were with Newman Haas and they were with Ganassi uh, at the end there. So, you know, there's no surprise to me that they, they were able to get to where they were um, putting in the investment and putting in the time and effort there. Mm-hmm. My third topic for this was the move to Ray Hall, right? So as you know, I stayed away from the Kenny Breck situation, right? That, that year, that last year, both Kenny and Max left Ray Hall at the end of that Max's third year, which was 2001. Um, and those two had some coming together that was rather unfortunate. And Bobby was mm-hmm. very vocal about, you know, the situation there. We did talk about um, a little bit Max's uh, performance with Ray Hall that first year, he finished fifth in the, in the standings, 14th, I believe it was in the second year, and then sixth in his that's third correct, year yeah. with Ray Hall. In that second year with Ray Hall, that's when Bobby left to go to Formula One to run the Jaguar team. Okay. As a, I, I'll say it as a favor to Ford, right? That mm-hmm. didn't last very long and he wasn't there very long. So I, I wanted to get into, but I didn't get a chance to, um, get into how that impacted the team. What were the effects on the team with Bobby leaving and going to Europe? Yeah. We couldn't get into that. But if you just look at Max's results from that second year, maybe I put two, two together and come up with something other than four, but it looks to me like there was a significant impact on that team. Yeah. You could hypothesize based on the results. Yeah. But I think this is also in that section where you see the most amount of introspection from max i agree i wasn't expecting that and no he was he was looking back and looking inward and looking outward and wanting to know i think there's still some unanswered questions when it comes around you know leaving ppi and Mm -hmm. going to ray hall and you know how come you know he was allowed to do that so he i think he still has some unanswered questions there that he'd like to get answered yeah maybe there is something there some gnawing feeling that I don't, I don't want to say regret necessarily, but I think maybe the benefit of hindsight benefit of being now 51 or 52 years old, looking Mm -hmm. back at it saying, I came to the party with Toyota. I came to the party with PPI. Maybe I should have stayed there, but he did also say he kind of wishes that maybe Cal Wells had looked at it differently when he came to Cal Mm -hmm. and talked about the potential for a move to, uh, to Ray Hall at that time. So it's interesting to me. I I don't think he's disrespectful of team Ray Hall by any stretch, right? It was, he said it, it was an honor for him to step into that Miller light car when Bobby stepped out of it. Yep. And it certainly was right. Would be for anybody. And Bobby's still an advisor to him and, you know, they still talk is based on what I heard in the conversation that they still, you know, interact with each other and all that. So yeah, I don't think there's any regrets at all. I think it's just hindsight 2020. You go, ah, maybe I should have done it this way. Right. Yeah. It is telling to me a little bit of what he said was, and I re-listened to it today so I can make sure I get it right. He said they were very results oriented. Right. Mm -hmm. I think any team doesn't matter the series or where they stand on the grid or whatever it is, I think it's always about winning, right? It's always about putting everything forward to the win. But I feel there is a way to nurture a winning environment. Whether you're standing on the top step of the podium or not, there's still a way to nurture a winning environment. Mm -hmm. And 
for me, that's how I choose. It's my show. It's my opinion. I'm entitled to it, right? That's how I, I choose to see that or, or hear that from Max. It was good. I was happy to be there. Um, you know, it was an honor to drive that car. They were very focused on results oriented. I choose to see it more like you can still foster a winning environment and still be focused on winning. Yeah, I think so. Like if you talk about PPI and him there, it was about developing that engine, developing the car. And I think Cal had said, based on the conversation we had with Max, was that we can't deliver on what you want right now. And so the choice is yours if you want to move over there. Um, but in developing that and putting the time into that, you are developing a winning car and would have got to the top podium over time in that situation. Because as you mentioned before, they didn't last too much longer. Right. But then that program went to other teams and, you know, from where Max went after IndyCar, he went with Toyota to the NASCAR program. So he still had that relationship with the Toyota um, folks over at the OEM. Yeah. And, and, it's good that you bring that up because that's that's the final point here that I have with this move to Ray Hall is it's a question that can never be answered. You don't know how much longer, you don't know if PPI would have been in that same path. They only lasted two more years in IndyCar after mm -hmm. Max left, right? In 99 with Pruitt, um, Scott Pruitt and Cristiano D'Amata and in 2000 with Oriol Servia and Cristiano D'Amata. The mod then, I believe, goes to Newman Haas. And I think mm -hmm. that might be when Toyota goes to Newman Haas, which mm -hmm. means then PPI leaves, they go off to their do their NASCAR program, mm -hmm. right? You don't know if Max would have stayed, that Max would have then been out of a ride anyway at the end of the two years. Yeah, you don't know, right? You're right. Yeah. So, you know, that's the question that can never be answered. Um, sports car racing. What's interesting is... It's only been 20 years or a little over 20 years since he came on the scene in sports car racing. And one of the things that he talked about was um, the differences between then and today that he feels like he's more suited to sports cars today because back, because today the cars are so reliable. It's more about speed, mm -hmm. right? It's more about being fast. Um, yeah. Cause he mentioned a, it's really a time for young IndyCar drivers to be in IMSA. And what did yeah. we see at the 24 hours of Daytona? Young and IndyCar just driver. that, yeah. right? Yeah. A bunch of young IndyCar drivers running these cars around the track at full bore. Yeah. I mean, he got his nickname uh, of Mad Max by driving a sports car Ferrari, in, Ferrari in, yeah. you know, in uh, at the Rolex 24 all out, right? He didn't say it in this. I couldn't figure out how to get him to say it. I'm just not that crafty, but I did hear him in the in a, a previous interview that when I was preparing for this was where he taught he could see the face of of Mr. Moretti when he was like, This, you know, blankety blank is gonna destroy my car. He said he yes. could see it on his on his lips. He had come in on that pit full bore because there was no pit speed limiter. He pulls in, they service you, the car, and he could see it on Moretti's face like, this guy's going to just destroy my car. If you Google it, you can see it on YouTube. It is oh, out really? there. I yeah. watched it today. And yeah. it's hauling into pits, hauling butt. And uh, he um, goes out just as fast, smoking the tires and everything else. But he unlapped themselves by six laps is what I heard on the broadcast. There you have it. Yeah. Mad Max. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, and and yeah. Varsha alluded to Mad Max uh, one time in that clip that I saw near the end of the race and it's stuck. Yep. It's funny how that happens, isn't it? It is funny how that happens for sure. Well, I, I, um, like I said, I mean, I, I we have the benefit of two days behind us uh, from the time we did this with Max and then being able to do this little spot here. Um, our editing team has done a phenomenal job. So I, I have no doubt the finished product, once it, it finally hits, um, will be amazing. And so 
And and just looking back, um, it was an intense conversation, but it was two days in after it, like it was really good. I really enjoyed it. So hopefully the listeners enjoyed it as well. Yeah. So do I. So, you know, as always, make sure um, you know, you leave us comments on the YouTube page or to our website or you know, to uh, email or our Twitter or whatever it is. We always put everything, all our links in the show notes, and we'll continue to do that as well, as well as the um, talk about the chili bowl um, mm-hmm. video with Robin Miller. We'll add that to the show notes as well. And um, I, I, I enjoyed it. I think um, unless the right circumstances come up, I think given that we're going into the, the season, finally, this will probably be our last interview for a little bit. Um, it was an interesting one for sure. Yeah, it was. I enjoyed yeah, every minute of it though. Experience. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, we will uh, catch you on the 21st of February for our next show when we talk about our season. Are we doing preview. our picks? Yes. <laughs> yes. Your picks will be wrong. Mine will be more right. And, um, <laughs> and we'll give our picks on the 21st I will and tell. then- We'll be back in the seat again on the 28th to talk about um, how wrong we are just starting out the gate in uh, the first race of the season. So uh, as always, we appreciate the listen and, um, you know, look forward to hearing your comments. Yeah. See you all. Thank you.